This is where the water flows into deep shafts called moulins. No one knows for sure where the water ends up, but Connie believes it flows straight to the base of the ice, lubricating it and making it flow faster. If he's right, then there would be a direct connection between climate change and the retreating glaciers. But so far, no one's been able to prove if the meltwater reaches the bedrock or if it simply flows through the ice and never reaches the bottom. Now, Connie and his team are going to drop a camera into a moulin to trace the route the water takes. It's the first time attempted built by NASA, designed to withstand freezing temperatures. They've chosen the biggest moulin they could find. There's no water running into it at surface level, but they know there's plenty down there because they can hear it. Precarious ice is. This is pretty safe, right? I think so. Okay. We go down, we hang on the rope. All right. And our colleagues take us out the gap. Which cut all the way to the bedrock. 60 meters. This is amazing. Uh, 70 meters. 70 meters. There we go. Now we're submerged. Wow. Finally, but if this Mulan does reach the very bottom, there's still a long way to go. Yeah, I think it's stuck. I think it's stuck. It could just be a To find out, Coin and his team will have to return next summer with a new type of camera. But wherever this water ends up, it's clear that more ice is melting. Scientists have mapped the area of Greenland's issue that experiences surface melt in summer. As recently as 1992, it was a relatively small area of low-lying ice around the edges of the ice sheet. But by 2005, the meltdown had massively expanded. It's thought Greenland is losing more than 200 cubic kilometers of ice annually. There's still 3 million cubic kilometers left but the rate of loss is accelerating. The entire ice sheet is changing in a way they did not anticipate five years ago. I'm a scientist, so I'm excited to find new results, but it does worry me because if it continues to move that fast, we will actually put a lot of fresh water in the ocean, and that has risk effects for the ocean circulation, for the climate, and for the population living close to the ocean. But it isn't only Greenland's ice that's getting thinner. Across the world, it's the same story. Like Jakobshaven, this is a fast-moving glacier that ends up in the sea. It's two and a half kilometers wide and 650 meters thick. But just 20 years ago, it was nearly twice as thick. Sure. Where the glacier meets the ocean, the result is clear. Chunks of ice are falling into the sea. Since 1980, the Columbia has retreated over 14 kilometers. Glaciers have been shrinking all over the world. The floating shelves that are also swan collapsed in just kilometers. 
there is now no doubt that the world's ice is in retreat. It's melting at a phenomenal rate and it's likely to accelerate over the next few years. But in the long term, nothing unusual. But for humans, it will be the start of new era. The loss of ice will transform the appearance of the planet. It will be the most visible change on the Earth to adorn a civilization. Imagine a world without business steps, city raids, or beach holidays.